Justin here from Airsoft Station, and today we are reviewing the new Vulcan Battle Machine 2.0. The first Vulcan Battle Machine was such a hit, they uh, did some revamping of it, made it look a little bit different, or a lot different, I should say, and um, just overall improved it, and deep down inside, it's still that Vulcan Battle Machine, just um, on a new level of performance. Um, these are going to be the new uh, manufactured Vulcan Battle Machines that are available and that we sell. And I gotta say, I'm kind of digging it. It's a little bit unique looking, but unique never hurts because especially with the M4 variety, a little variety just, it helps. Um, we need we need a little uniqueness in that uh, M4 style. So, starting with the externals, it's got this very aggressive looking key mod rail system. It's not a full key mod rail system because it has your standard Picatinny on the top as well as the bottom, but the two sides are key mod, making it um, just help keeping that weight down a little bit. This is a very light gun. Um, a lot of the pieces are polymer, and um, it's just very maneuverable, very lightweight and uh, that key mod system just helps keep the weight off the front of it so it's a little more balanced. Um, that bottom uh, Picatinny rail is very nice though because you don't have to buy any special key mod attachments if you wanted to put a grip or say a flashlight but if you wanted to really trick this thing out you have the ability to um, just buy those key mod Picatinny rail segments or actual key mod accessories directly. Um, it's got this two-tone look to it. This is the like space gray and black I think it's called, but um, they also have it in black and tan, a um, couple different variations as well. I also really like the new flip-up sights because even when they're down and they're out of the way, you have these very cool um, high visibility front and rear sights that are almost like pistol sights, like what you see on a 1911, the two dots with the center dot. Um, I just really like that because even when they're flipped down and say you have an optic, you could co-witness with these. But when you flip them up, they are just the standard flip-up sights adjustable for um, windage as well. So um, actual receiver on it, pretty straightforward. Um, just that Vulcan emblem um, says the model number. Your fire selector switch, this one was a little bit noticeable, uh, a noticeable difference from the previous model. It just feels a little bit more snappier, um, clicks into place a little bit better, which I really like because, you know, I don't like those sloppy, mm, where, where am I exactly? It's just safe, definitely semi, definitely full auto. And it's good to have that um, very obvious um, selection into place that I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, the one downside, moving to the grip that I've seen, I'm not sure if this is just the one I picked up to review or if they're all like this, but let me bring it over here a little close up. It's got this lip right here, right there. It's almost like a little shelf from your grip to your trigger guard and just that little lip right there is just enough to annoy your middle finger while it's sitting there. So if your middle finger is sitting right there and your uh, index finger is on the trigger, it's just a little bit of a lip that if you're holding it low down on the handle, it's not noticeable, but at least for me, as time goes on, as movement happens, say you're running, you start wiggling your fingers up onto that lip and it just gets a little bit annoying. Not painful, but if I was holding this for a long period of time, it might start abrading that. So, Vulcan, if you're watching this video, I hope that's something that you fix. Or, again, it might just be mine and I'm just making an assumption that they're all like that. So, if that's the case, then uh, it's not anything to worry about. Um, metal buffer tube and this new innovative stock, it still holds uh, just like a standard crane stock, but it looks very skeletonized, looks very low profile, but it still is capable of holding that 9.6 crane stock battery, which we all know and love. Very simple, just the two tabs there to pop off the end cap, and uh, the adjustment is right there. Pull that up, and it's six position adjustable as well. Let's take this guy over to the chrono range and see how it shoots with a 9.6. As you guys could see from the chrono results, the rate of fire is very respectable with a 9.6. As for the FPS, it's sort of right on the tipping point, whether it's a field gun or a CQB gun. Um, 
for field use, it's definitely going to do well. Um, that FPS is plenty for it to throw those BBs out really far, especially since this has a um, revamped hop-up system in there, which is going to increase that range and accuracy. Um, as for the CQB use, maybe after a little bit of breaking in, it would consistently be under those CQB um, limits as well. I can't say for sure just because I don't know exactly how these springs break in because they are relatively new on the market. So I can't say that for sure, but that's my educated assumption. Um, Overall, final thoughts on this gun, they have done a lot to um, sort of do an overhaul from the uh, 1.0 to the 2.0 for the battle machine. Um, it's definitely, they've added a lot of cool new stuff. Starting off with the motor grip, um, they've completely redone the motor grip. Um, it's got a shimless design in there now, which essentially means instead of having a shim in between your screw on the uh, plate, on the lower plate here to your motor, which when you adjust it, it moves up and down, there's no shim. It just goes straight from that screw all the way up to the base of your motor, which just gives you a little bit more control and helps keep everything cooler because there's not a plate in the way there. Um, it's also got a vented base plate which is going to help uh, lower the temperature of your motor while you are shooting it on full auto for extended periods of time which are going to increase your uh, the life of your motor. It's got an improved gear set in that gearbox as well. It's 30% stronger. Um, they've got a lot stricter manufacturer tolerances and um, quality control to make sure all those gears are shimming perfectly. It's also, and this is something that I really like, this is one of my favorite things they've done, is they've put on a uh, six metal tooth piston in there. And those metal teeth are so important to prevent your piston from stripping. That's one of the biggest things you see on a gearbox when it breaks. So those uh, that, that metal teeth is gonna prevent that piston from stripping out. The barrel and the hop up is completely redone, as I already mentioned. Um, it's got a retention clip, which is gonna help with the stability of that hop up, as well as um, they've completely redone the barrel out of CNC um, the CNC barrels, which are um, just going to make it more accurate, more consistent. Those BBs are going to be able to flow along that barrel a lot smoother. Um, as well as the trigger. I believe they've done some stuff to the trigger to just sort of reinforce it, uh, make it stronger, make it last longer. And it's also just a very smooth trigger pull here. I'll take it off. Um, when you're pulling it, it's just very stiff. There's no wobble. Um, so as you can see, they've done a lot of stuff to really revamp this gun. And um, I gotta say, I'm really liking it. Uh, it does not come with a battery or charger, but when you think about the price tag on this gun, it's a very budget-friendly gun. Um, purchasing a 9.6 battery, which is what I'd recommend, and a smart charger, you're still going to be in that um, beginner or budget, starting off um, budget-friendly stage. I think I said budget like 500 times. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. It's very affordable, and that battery and, and that coming with battery and charger um, is not the end of the world because per picking up that 9.6, picking up that smart charger, very affordable. Um, overall, just very unique, very aggressive looking rail on here, um, ready for attachments right out of the box and also ready to take out on the field or even potentially take into a CQB environment right out of the box. So very cool. Um, I'm really digging the new Battle Machine 2.0 and that's about it for this video. Any comments or questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can and until the next one, have a good one guys.